The one thing that I haven't really done on this channel that much that I get the most requests for, besides Malazan, is why don't you talk about Brandon Sanderson more? Well, 2020 says you are in luck because we're going to talk about Brandon Sanderson a lot this year, and I mean a lot, as in every single month, sometimes multiple times a month. But first, let's take a little peek at what makes the Cosmere so special. <laughs> Does the destination matter? Or is it the path that we take? I declare that no accomplishment has substance nearly as great as the road used to achieve it. We are not creatures of destinations. It is the journey that shapes us. Our callous feet, our backs strong from carrying the weight of our travels, our eyes open with the fresh delight of experiences lived. The purpose of a storyteller is not to tell you how to think, but to give you questions to think upon. The Cosmere is a fictional shared universe created by Brandon Sanderson for many of his fantasy novels to take place within. Elantris, Mistborn, Warbreaker, The Stormlight Archive, White Sand, and Arcanum Bounum are all a part of the Cosmere. All of these tales share a single creation myth and a single cosmology that gives underlying theorem of magic for all of these connected worlds. Since all of the worlds in the Cosmere are connected, it means you should pay attention. Certain characters from one series sometimes show up in other series. With 11 novels, 8 short stories, and 3 graphic novels already a part of the Cosmere, and a new Stormlight book in the fall, 2020 is as good a year as any to take a look at all of the works in Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere. Hey, what's up, bookworms and Lord Ruler Brandon Sanderson fans? Mike here today to talk about some Cosmere and some Lord Ruler Brandon Sanderson. Uh, if you don't know, I call Brandon Sanderson the Lord Ruler because there is no fantasy author working today that writes faster and at more quality than Brandon Sanderson. And the fact that he is just such a nice guy really helps things too. So a uh, little background here, I have been a Brandon Sanderson fan really not that long. Uh, I think 2016 was when a good friend recommended the Mistborn trilogy to me. I said, I've always heard a lot about Brandon Sanderson. I know he's very popular. I go to the bookstores and I see just walls of his books. So I know that he's very popular, but I don't even know where to start. At the time, I thought the guy just wrote Will of Time books. I had no idea. This is before I read Will of Time too. So funny story there. But he told me, hey, I think a very good entry point for you in Brandon Sanderson is to read the Mistborn trilogy. So I did so, uh, just kind of wiped those books out really quick. And another a different friend who was into Sanderson said, well, okay, you've, you've had your appetizer now. You ready for your full course meal? Because there's this little thing called the Stormlight Archive. And the rest is pretty much history. Now, as big of a Brandon Sanderson fan as I claim to be, uh, I can't call myself a completionist because I have only read Stormlight and Mistborn. I haven't read anything else that he's done up to this point. So uh, I call myself a big fan because those aren't exactly, you know, light reads, but uh, I wanted to kind of go through everything and read everything about the Cosmere. I was talking with a friend about it, and I had a couple questions about the ending of Mistborn, and I asked him a question. He said, man, I've read all the Cosmere. I don't even know that yet. And I was like, you know what? I need to read more of the Cosmere. And it wasn't until recently that I just discovered how deep the Cosmore actually was. I had no idea that Elantris was part of it. I had no idea that uh, that Warbreaker was a... Well, I knew Warbreaker was kind of a part of it, but that was actually from comments from you guys in some of these videos. But... Uh, in 2020, I want to kind of go through his entire Cosmere works. Now, I'm not going to be doing stuff in this series that is not part of the Cosmere, but all the short stories, all the graphic novels, and all the novels I plan to do between now and the release of Wither Rhythms of War, if that's what the book ends up being called. That's Stormlight number four, for those who don't know yet. Uh, that is released in November. So starting this month, 
We're going to be starting with Elantris, and we're going to be going all the way through Rhythm to War. So uh, if you guys have not read the Cosmer yet, and you want to jump on board, hey, man, I would love to have you guys buddy read some of this stuff with me. Uh, I have read some of, like I've said, I have read uh, the original Mistborn trilogy. That's Era 1. have not read Era 2. And uh, I will be reading Era 2 for the first time in this, in this kind of this go-along here. And I will not be reading Stormlight again, because as you know, those are very, very heavy tomes. But what I plan to do in this series is, much like with my Wheel of Time and my Witcher and my First Law videos, is I will do a why you should read for each one of those, and that is going to be non-spoiler for each one of those series. But then I will do the actual review, and that will be full of spoilers, because there's so much stuff that you want to tackle here. So I'll be making, basically, there's a non-spoiler section, and then there's going to be the spoiler section for everybody who has read this stuff and wants to get down and dirty and into it. So uh, before we begin, though, uh, with the whole schedule that I have, I want to kind of give you guys an idea of what the Cosmere is all about, in case you don't know. A quick history. Now, I'm going to be going some, off some notes here because there is a lot. Uh, as I started digging into this, I found a rabbit hole that went way deeper than I even imagined. So uh, if it just feels like I'm reading off of my uh, notes here, it's because I am. Uh, well, for the most part. Uh, i got to add my nice little rambling charm to it. Now, the origin of the Cosmere is that a long, long time ago, there was a singular deity, uh, a name I couldn't pronounce, so I'm just going to call him a deity, that was a celebrated force of life and creation. But something happened, and this god was shattered into 16 shards. Now, each of these shards contained a single aspect of his, uh, or I'm sorry, its cosmological DNA and power, both the positive and the negative aspects that were contained within those. So, but present at the shattering were 16 individ individuals who, um, I guess you could say, they were just kind of waiting around for the right time, and they, they found the shards uh, that were left from the catastrophe, and they took them up, and they gained immense power, and they essentially ascended to godhood. And now with this newfound power, these shard holders, as they're come to be known, well, they went on to do whatever it is that gods do. But with a consciousness to direct them, many of these shards began to invest their magic and influence on certain planets and people. Now, every shard impacts a planet in a way that allows certain individuals to tap into their own distinct magical power. Now, sometimes that magic is invested in the environment, and this is the case kind of like with the high storms that come rolling through Roshar in the Stormlight Archive. And then other times, the power is actually present within the individual already, and they simply need fuel to activate it kind of like the burning of metals in Mistborn. Now, there are three different realms of existence in the Cosmere. There's the physical realm, the cognitive realm, and the spiritual realm. Now, all these things possess an aspect in each realm. Um, physical is obviously is the world you stand on now. And, and cognitive is going to be the realm of thought and intentionality. And it may be a method that allows the travel between the planets, which would explain the whole world hopper thing and, uh, and character kind of crossovers between the novels. And lastly is the spiritual realm. And from what I've read so far in just those two series, uh, it's kind of only been hinted at. But it seems to be, of course, some sort of afterlife, if it was. So we have various godlike god -like beings kind of tinkering around with fundamental forces of the Cosmere for their own ends and curiosities. But, uh, you know, that all sounds well and good, except there is a caveat, and there always must be a caveat, right? Uh, the longer a person holds a shard, the more that shard's influence comes to bear. Think of it like the one ring, it starts to corrupt a little bit. Uh, so while the influence uh, welcomes in such shards as preservation, honor, cultivation, ruin, it, it can lead to disastrous results in shards that exert, it kind of exert a more negative and destructive influence. Now, I can't go really any more into that without getting into spoilers. But yes, all these worlds are connected. But guys, don't look at it kind of like you would look at the MCU. This isn't something where you've got to read it in order or else you're going to be lost. Now, each individual series, you know, like Mistborn or Stormlight, obviously you want to read those in order. But it isn't like a set universe, even like the Star Wars EU, where you've got to read them in order because they're going to be references and stuff. No. In fact, if you don't even know that the Cosmos... I read all of Mistborn, and I was halfway through Words of Radiance before I realized, hey, didn't this one character show up in Mistborn? And that's when I first discovered that this was a shared universe. So if you're not looking for it, you can miss it. But if you pay attention, you can be rewarded. Now, I don't know how much some of these have crossed over, because like I said, I've only read, what, like... 40% of the Cosmere here. So that's why I want to do this. I want to look for some of these crossovers while we go through it. But um, again, there are six series set within the Cosmere here. There is Elantris, which is set in the world of Cell, S-E-L, Cell. The Warbreaker series is set in the world of Nalthus. Mistborn is the world of Schedule. 
Stormlight is the world of Roshar, my personal favorite, and White Sand is the world of Taldane. Now, Arcanum, Abound, Un Arcanum Unbounded is kind of other short stories and novellas that are set within the Cosmere. As far as uh, I haven't read any of the short stories yet, except Edge Dancer, which I knew that took place in Roshar, uh, they're not necessarily in any of these things, but they are part of the Cosmere. Now, as just how deep the Cosmere goes, we're going to talk about that as we go along because uh, there is a lot. Now, like I said before, there is an actual chronological version of this, and I'm going to flash it on the screen here so you can see. Uh, there's a, you know, six series, 11 novels, uh, eight short story collections, three graphic novels, uh, it, all kinds of stuff that you can get into here. And there is a chronological way to read it if you want to. But for the sake of this channel, I'm not going to do that because I am trying to run up all the way through September to do Stormlight September, as I'm going to be calling it. And, you know, March is going to be Mistborn March. And that's credit to uh, John Fleming's a viewer who actually coined that. Thank you, John. And uh, I want to uh, kind of make this go all the way to the release of Stormlight number four. So uh, if it's a little bit out of order from the chronological... Sorry, this is just kind of what I, I came up with. So I'm going to kind of go over my schedule now. And, and guys, I hope you like Brandon Sanderson because there's going to be a lot of Brandon Sanderson in 2020. It kind of got sidelined uh, my first real year on this channel last year because I really got into uh, Wheel of Time. And that kind of just kind of dominated my, my, my time there. But the other side of this is kind of like a little bonus for you Sanderson fans and Wheel of Time fans is that they are not part of the Cosmere, obviously, but I'll also be finishing Wheel of Time at the same time this is going along. So there'll be a nice little tie-in there for you. How's that for a crossover? And what I mean by that is the Wheel of Time books that Brandon Sanderson completed, obviously. All right, so let's just start at the beginning. January, I'm going to be doing Elantris and the two short stories, Hope of Elantris and The Emperor's Soul. So please uh, follow along with me on that. I'm going to be reading the 10th anniversary edition. It says on the cover there are 10,000 extra words. So knowing Brandon Sanderson, that's just something he came up with, you know, on a napkin in an airport because the guy just writes like a machine. But that is the edition that I will be starting here. I'm going to be finishing up this Dresden Files book probably today. And I plan on starting Elantris tomorrow or Wednesday at the latest. Uh, don't know anything about it. Uh, like I said, I didn't even know until the other day on the Caravan app. Uh, I, talk, I talked about the guys on the, uh, the, the Caravan app. You can find the channel right here. It's a, it's a really good time and a lot of good discussion going on over there. If you're into buddy reads, that's the place to go to. And uh, anyhow, someone on there actually told me Elantris is part of the Cosmere because I was planning on just starting with Warbreaker. I had no idea. So I was like, well, shoot, now I got to kind of move it up. And that's where I came up with the idea to do uh, just kind of go through every month and have 2020 be the year of Sanderson or Cosmere 2020, as I'm calling it, because that's the only election that matters. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's January. February, I will be doing Warbreaker. Uh, I got that leather-bound edition I talked about. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's right there. But uh, uh, I'm going to be going through that in February. March is, again, Mistborn March. Now, I will be doing a Why You Should Read for the Mistborn Trilogy. Yes, Arrow 1, because I haven't read Arrow 2. And that will be non-spoilers, kind of explaining what the Mistborn series is, what it's all about, and why I think that you should read it. Uh, I'll also be doing... Uh, some of the short stories on that as well. I'll be doing what it's called uh, the 11th Metal, I believe, is in Arcanum Abounded. And I'll be doing that one as well as obviously Final Empire, Will of Ascension, and Hero of Ages. That's going to be Mistborn March. Plenty for you there. Starting in April, I'm going to be hitting Mistborn Era 2. Now, this will be my first read of Mistborn Era 2. So I won't be doing a Why You Should Read, but I will be doing my reviews and, like I said, spoiler discussion for those. Starting in April is going to be Alloy of Law. And that will be complemented with the short story, Alamancer Jack and the Pits of Eltania. Interest, interesting name. May, we're going to be moved on to uh, Shadows of Self. And at the same time, I'm going to be reading the first Wheel of Time, Brandon Sanderson book, The Gathering Storm. So that should be quite a month. June is going to be The Bands of Mourning. And since I will be finished with, uh, with all of... Era 2 that is currently released. I've been told it will be okay for me to read Mistborn, A Secret History. And so I will do that after I finish The Bands of Morning. And obviously I will continue my Wheel of Time Sanderson kick with Towers of Midnight, the penultimate edition before the big one. July, there's going to be no actual Cosmere content because I want to make sure that I give a memory of light and the ending of my Wheel of Time journey the recognition that it deserves. So July is going to be dedicated to, well, the new Dresden Files book, and also 
a memory of light. I want to give Will of Time the credit that it deserves and the time and attention it deserves because, guys, I launched this channel off of Wheel of Time. And uh, that, that will be, what, a year and three months if I stick to the schedule that it took me to finish Wheel of Time. So I want to make sure that I give... And also, it might take a month to read a memory of light. You seen that sucker? It's bigger than most Sanderson books. So uh, there we go. August, I haven't procured it yet. So that's why I moved White Sand back. I had never heard of White Sand until yesterday when I was doing my research for this. But uh, it is a three-volume graphic novel, about uh, 150 pages a pop. So I want to see if I can actually track those down for an affordable cost first, or if I just want to end up going digital on those. And uh, that will be in August. So I'm quite interested to see how that works out. Uh, I didn't even know that this thing existed, but Brandon Sanderson doing a, a graphic novel sounds like a winner to me. September is going to be Stormlight September. Again, thank you, John. Now, I will obviously be doing a Why You Should Read for the Stormlight Archive. That will be telling you why you should read this series. Give me a couple of warnings because, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. Stormlight's very heavy, and you need to be ready for it. If you've read Wheel of Time, I think you'll be fine. If you're jumping straight from, you know, YA to Stormlight, it might, it might slow you down a little bit. But again, I'm going to be here to walk you through these things. At least I hope I can. And by doing so, I will be doing uh, spoiler-filled reviews and discussion for The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, Oathbringer, and the short story, or as kind of most people call it, Stormlight 2.5. That is Edge Dancer. That's all about lift. We'll get into that uh, when the time comes. October. Uh, this is where I'm going to kind of wrap up a lot of the stragglers, the short stories in Arcanum Abounded. That's uh, Shadows for Silence in the Forest of Hell, Sixth of the Dusk, and then I'm going to do my Rhythm of War wish list. That's everything that I want to see happen in Stormlight number four. November, it's going to be countdown time. It's going to be read-along time, hopefully, for anybody who wants to join. Obviously, that's a Stormlight book is so heavy, it's going to be way too hard to schedule a, a, a read-along, kind of like I'm doing with the Rage of Dragons. But uh, it's something that I'm going to be reading Stormlight number four in November. It'd be cool if you guys do it at the same time because it's more fun to talk about people. And December, I'm kind of leaving open for a however long Rhythm of War takes and then just kind of do an ending retrospective, maybe a Cosmere theories, a Cosmere connections kind of thing. And that, guys, will be Cosmere 2020 on the channel. Huge, huge plan I've been putting together for a while. I know a lot of people have asked me, why don't you do talk about how much you love Brandon Sanderson, but you've only read about, you know, a third of his work and you have done what one video for Brandon Sanderson since you started this channel? And I heard you. I heard you. So I, I hope you guys are into Sanderson. If you're not into Sanderson, hey, maybe dive in where I'm diving in and maybe he might grow on you. You know, I understand that he's not for everybody. Some people don't like his prose. I think it's beautiful. I think his character development's fantastic. Uh, I think his world building is right up there with Robert Jordan. You can tell that he learned from the master there. And then you got his third acts are maybe the best third acts in all of fantasy. It is every time, every time, what do they call it? The, uh, the Sander Lanch, where it's just the third act rewards you for any problems you had in the first and second. So, uh, Again, guys, I'm really, really excited about this. I can't wait to dig into it with you because this is going to be so much fun. I'm looking forward to becoming a scholar, if you will, of the Cosmere and uh, everything that's going forward because it doesn't seem like Sanderson's slowing down anytime soon, and that's only going to benefit us. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments below how much of the Cosmere have you read. Are you interested in joining me on this journey? What are you looking forward to? Hey, what are you not looking forward to? There are no wrong answers, but guys,